Sean Haney here with RealAgriculture.com and Real Ag Radio, Rural Radio 147, Sirius XM. I am pleased to welcome my guest here today. It is an MP from Nova Scotia. It is Mr. Cody Blois, who is joining us from a, a dark room somewhere in the House of Commons. <laughs> as the, everything's in session, and he may have to actually step out and vote here at some point, too, on his phone. So, uh, Mr. Blois, great to chat with you. Thanks, Sean. Great to be back on the on the show. And for your listeners that aren't watching on your YouTube video, yes, it's a little closet here in the House of Commons, a little quiet room. Uh, I do have to vote in a few minutes, but uh, we'll deal with that when we get there. Okay, good stuff. Well, you also are the chair of the Standing Committee on Agriculture, and a report recently came out in, in April uh, entitled Feeding the World, Strengthening Canada's Capacity to Respond to Global Food Insecurity. It's a, it's a big document, I think over 70 pages. Um, what is the purpose of this work being done by the Standing Committee on Agriculture? So I, I want to take you back to, it would have been spring of last year when real concerns, uh, of course, were arising about global food security because of the war in Ukraine uh, and because of the conditions that we were seeing and, and continue to see, frankly, in, in Eastern Europe. Uh, the committee felt it was really important moment in time to actually call witnesses in an international context to understand how Ukraine being such an important uh, grain producer on a global market, but also, frankly, Russia and, uh, and Belarus being major potash uh, and fertilizer producers, uh, that this is going to have consequences. And so the committee undertook a study to understand the impact internationally. That really uh, played into about June of last year. We provided recommendations to the government at that time, really more in an international aid perspective to support farmers in Ukraine and some of the circumstances we were seeing on the ground. This fall, uh, the committee took a little bit more of a domestic view about ways in which we can help support the Canadian agriculture sector just to keep doing the good work that is already happening, frankly. So that was the context. Uh, parliamentary committees, their role is really essentially to provide recommendations up to the government. The government has uh, so many days to respond once these committees come. The goal, of course, is to increase profile on the issues that parliamentarians think are important and hope that the uh, government may take us up in some of the uh, some of the angles that we push. Bipartisan effort. Of course, there's representatives from all the different parties. So this isn't uh, a document that's just, you know, from the perspective of the Liberal Party that you're a member of this, this is this also includes other parties. So a bipartisan effort, which I think uh, is uh, makes the document, I don't know if I would say unique, but I, I think it's definitely worth people going through it and reading uh, what the committee produced. So from your perspective as the chair, there, there's a lot of recommendations here. Um, we're not going to go through all of them, of course, but what do you think is one of the key ones that uh, really you hope that the, the Canadian government takes hold of and pays attention to? So just a couple. I want to go back to your comment and, and just flag for, for guys like John Barlow. We got Yves Perron, um, Alistair McGregor. We, we do have really good um, collaboration on the committee. Uh, so I certainly want to give a tip of the cap. Francis Drouin helps lead our side on the Liberal part. Um, we're almost so collaborative that I think when I look at the recommendations, I think there's about 22 or 23. I, I think we could have pared it down. I think in the fall, we started to get into a lot of different dynamics um, of, of the art of the possible, which is great. But in this world, I think we need to be a little bit more focused. Uh, Sean, a couple of the areas that I think are particularly important. Uh, we talked about asking for clarification on C208, which came in the budget, which I was happy to see the government. Uh, provide that clarity because at the end of the day, when we look about making sure that there's a generational transfer of assets, uh, that particular piece of legislation is extremely important. There was some uh, legitimate concerns from finance about making sure that the actual transfer happened. And I think the clarity that has been provided uh, is extremely positive. Uh, we were calling on the minister to uh, provide clarity on guidance for gene editing. We know this is particularly important. Uh, I don't know if the minister's made her announcement yet today, but I know that there's something. Yes. She did. Okay, she good. Did. Uh, so, you know, those are a couple areas on domestic side that I think are extremely important. There are kind of some fan favorites that we've been talking about for a while uh, on temporary farm workers, uh, maybe not necessarily as big in Western Canada, but particularly big in the hort and uh, fruit growing sectors uh, in Central Canada and Eastern Canada. Um, and, and certainly talking about things like inner switching and important rail infrastructure. We saw in the budget uh, that uh, the government's going to be working to extend the uh, inner switching elements. I know that's going to be very welcome news in the part of the country that you call home, Sean. Um, so those are some of the things that are there. Some of these things have been talked about for a while. 
but I just gave you a few examples where the government is moving on them. I think we should celebrate those, but at the same time push uh, to continue to do more. And I think we're at a moment in time right now with what has transpired in the last year that there is an increased focus on food security. I think there's an increased understanding from Canadians that may not call rural Canada home uh, about the importance of farming and the importance of men and women that put food on our plate, but also around the world. So now's the time to continue to push for the needs and, and public policy priorities for farmers so that Canada can be playing uh, an even more outsized role than we already do. One of the recommendations was that the government, I, I can't remember the exact phrasing, but relook and and reevaluate its position on the fertilizer tariffs uh, in regards to fertilizer coming out of Russia. Canada is still the only G7 country. We heard from you know 27 different farm groups in Ontario yesterday putting out a release. I know they've sent a letter to Minister Freeland saying, you know, let's get rid of these tariffs. Um, any response from the government on on that recommendation? So in the budget, and I, I suspect you've already talked about this, but certainly in the budget. Uh, there was a focus uh, on being able to take the monies that the government had collected in the early days. You can remember that there was some uncertainty about shipments that had already left uh, ports and were arriving in Canada and what the implications were. Uh, that money is going back through off-calf in terms of a program that's going to help farmers. I know the minister has talked about uh, some of the difficulty in the accounting exercise of figuring out exactly who paid and who hadn't. I, I think this is probably at least a step in the right direction to recognize some of the impact that has happened. Uh, I know suppliers, Sean, have made adjustments to try to get around. I, I think farmers at the end of the day understand that we're all in this collectively. You're right. Canada is one of the only G7. I believe Japan is the other. But I do take notice that this is a challenge. And this is one way that which Canada is helping to contribute. We've looked at other ways to help support through the advanced payment program. Uh, I don't know if the government's going to make a move. The committee obviously highlighted that concern. Um, but I do think it's a broader opportunity. Let me say this. When we look at the capacity that exists in Western Canada, I've asked companies, fertilizer companies that have appeared before the Agriculture Committee, how do we start looking at building self-sufficiency across the country? We have such great assets in Western Canada. How do we find a way to make sure that potash coming from Saskatchewan is supporting farmers in my area in Nova Scotia? Even if it takes some ability for government to get involved to help build the case, I think in a world right now, why do we want to be supporting countries around the world that are making war against peaceful countries instead of uh, actually building that self-sufficiency in the country? So I think there's a bigger conversation to be had, and I know and I can appreciate some of the frustration I was on the ground in Ontario, but I think from moral high ground, we've got it right, and we do have other plans to try to help support farmers. Yeah, so the, the Canadian Shield does not need to be a wall. Um, sometimes we sort of treat it that way. It's it's bizarre to me how we, in my opinion here, we don't think of things like from a domestic strategy standpoint. And you gave the example of the pot ashes as one of those examples. You were on the ground in Saskatchewan a couple of weeks ago. How was that trip? So, Sean, I've got my vote. Look, I'll even show you. Uh, I've got seven <laughs> minutes left and I don't want the whip to get in trouble here. I'm going to just pull my headset off. Okay. People online will... Uh, We'll get to see this, but uh, people that are listening, I'll be back in like 20 seconds. Just one sec. That sounds good. Like it's like an interlude. Well, uh, this is funny. This is good. This is this is what happens when you're people try to squeeze you in. This is good stuff. I really appreciate Cody having this conversation with us and uh, and breaking all this down at such a busy time. It's important work. You know, I think it cannot be stated enough you know some of that work of that standing committee on agriculture and how you know some of the the members that cody mentioned how they work together to try to come up with recommendations and you know it's trying to find traction with some of those recommendations that is of course that next challenge there's the report and then there is trying to grab traction with some of those recommendations so uh looks like the voting is concluded or he's he's in the process there he's good good he's got it what, what are you voting on so this was on a Bill S-11, uh, which is about the idea of trying to reduce uh, forced child labor, uh, supply chains, particularly, uh, we can appreciate that, we want to make sure the project, the the um, products that we're getting are not going to be uh, sourced from uh, countries that are allowing those practices to happen. So that was uh, my good friend, John McKay, uh, who's in Ontario, uh, longtime member of parliament, 25 years. Let me just say this, Sean, uh, the beauty of a virtual parliament is before I would have been having to sit in the House of Commons. Right. Now we have these tools that allow us to be a little bit more flexible for me to join the show uh, and not uh, compromise on my parliamentary duties. But um, 
look, you mentioned Saskatchewan. We had a great opportunity uh, to be there in the province, and it was really on two things, uh, Canada's ability to feed and fuel the world. And when you think about the Prairie Provinces, uh, you guys in particular, I say you, Sean, because you're, you're out in Lethbridge, I believe. Uh, boy, you know, there's a lot of good things happening. And we do have a blind spot as the Liberal Party, obviously, since we don't have Ralph Goodale in the province. Uh, so I took seven members of Parliament. Uh, we went and had the opportunity to go to MacArthur River which is the uranium mine in northern Saskatchewan. Unbelievable tour. Uh, we had the chance to meet with uh, CEOs of some of the largest businesses in Saskatchewan, and we also met with a number of the commodity groups. So it was a great opportunity to listen, to engage, and to make sure uh, that there's an opportunity for them, being agriculture groups or stakeholders in, in provinces where we don't have representation, so that there's at least a channel into the government to uh, to try to help move issues that matter in that uh, in that province. Good to see you getting out on the ground and getting, you know, getting seeing with your own eyes and not not just the, you know, the prairies, but, you know, you, you got to do that across the, the country because agriculture is just so diverse and so different. And I think that's important. Uh, that's Sean, I'm, coming important to you. Trips. I'm coming to you in July. Remember a couple of years ago, I was on the show and you said you were going to have a beer waiting for me. So I, I am hoping to come out uh, as part of the stampede, but I've been talking to uh, Canadian Cattle Association and others about the opportunity to get out into rural Alberta and engage with uh, nice. with folks. And uh, I'll try to make my way down to Lethbridge or we'll meet somewhere in the middle for a beer. I'm hosting the uh, the Stampede Egg Party. Uh, and so if you're going to be there, we can definitely have that uh, pint at that event. Uh, Minister Bibeau was at it last year um, right. and represented the government. Um, hey, finally, Liberal uh, Convention this this week, the party convention this weekend. Uh, now, any resolutions related to agriculture that are worth noting? There is one. Uh, you might recall, Sean, we might have had a conversation, I think it was about a year or two ago, uh, about Canada as an agriculture superpower that passed the policy resolution process. Uh, right now, uh, because of there's essentially nine policy proposals that come through from caucus, uh, one of which came from the rural caucus. Sophie Chattel helped sponsor this. She is the member for Pontiac and currently serves as our rural caucus chair. It's around trying to increase government spending in agriculture. If you look at the OECD average, although our sector does very well and we're proud of what we do, there, our, our average is below the OECD average. And so I think there's more work that government writ large, whether or not it was the last federal government or this one, we need to continue, especially as rural members of parliament, regardless of what jersey we wear, to promote agriculture, to make sure that Canadians understand the good work that goes on and that we need to make sure that industry is in good shape in the days ahead because it's going to matter uh, on a whole host of fronts. And and get that money into things, you know, not just solutions around the environment and climate, but also into productivity and, and things like that too, right? Look, we've heard that absolutely. I know this government has a focus on reducing emissions and, and agriculture producers are already doing a really good job at that. I think anytime we can extend uh, tools to help continue that good work we're going to do, but it's not just solely on, on environmental initiatives. Uh, competitiveness needs to matter, regulatory reform to reduce some administrative barriers. Um, obviously, uh, capitalizing on the trade relationships that we have. The Prime Minister often talks about that Canada is the only G7 country that has a trading agreement with every other G7 country. Uh, it covers a lot of the world. Obviously, we look at CPTPP. Uh, the committee actually next, Sean, is going to be studying uh, the Indo-Pacific and the opportunities that Canadian producers have to play on that side. So there's a lot more. Environment is an important element, but so too is the sustainability in a sense of fiscal sustainability and uh, the opportunity for farmers to continue to thrive. He is a MP from the riding of King Hans in Nova Scotia, represents them well, and also represents the industry of agriculture as the chair of the Standing Committee on Agriculture. Mr. Boyce, thanks so much for joining us here today. Thanks, Sean. All the best to your listeners.